All right, Chip. All right. The Dumfries Town Council, the Dumfries Town Council work session for Tuesday, June 18th, 2019, is hereby called to order. Uh, roll call, please. Councilman Brewer. Here. Councilman Fields. Here. Councilwoman Miles. Here. Councilwoman Neville. Present. Councilwoman Willis. Here. Vice Mayor Nickerson. Here. Mayor Wood. Present. All right, we have a quorum. Next on our uh, agenda is the uh, invocation by Pastor Mark from the Church of the Pentecost, Shiloh Assembly. Father God, I want to thank you for the gift of life. I want to thank you for a day like this you have made. We have come this far not because we deserve, but because you've been so gracious unto us. We want to thank you, O oh God, for the city of Dumfries, for what you have done for us this couple of days and the years. We know very well that you are with us. As we meet here, O oh God, we want to commit this session into your hands. We want to pray, O oh God, for the mayor and the council members. We want to pray for peace for the, this city. We want to pray for your protection. We want to commit the security agencies into your hands. We pray, Lord, that your peace that surpasses all human understanding will be their portion. We want to pray, O oh God, lifting this gathering into your hand. We pray for wisdom, that you direct the affairs of this gathering, that they will take decisions that will affect this community, this city, O oh God, in a positive way, that at the end of the day, we shall have every reason, every reason to bless you. We thank you, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer. Please rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Next on our agenda is the adoption of the agenda. A town manager, do you have any uh, amendments that you'd like to bring to the agenda? Uh, no, sir. All right. Council? Uh, is there anything you'd like to add to the agenda? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I would like to add under action items for G, a resolution recognizing June as um, Pride Month for LGBTQ. So letter D? Yes. Okay. Resolution to adopt June as Pride Month. Okay. All right. Any, uh, anything else, Council? Um, there's a typo under the next meetings for July 2nd. That's a meeting, not a work session. Okay. That's it. All right. I'll, with those changes, I welcome a motion from the floor. Motion. Motion to approve the agenda is uh, amended. Second. All right. It's been motioned by the vice mayor and second by Council Lady Willis. All right. Seeing no more discussion, please call for the question. All right, motion carries 7 0. All right, next on the uh, agenda is our citizen comment period. All right, any citizen may address the council for up to five minutes. Uh, chair or representative of a board, commission, or committee may speak up to eight minutes. Uh, town clerk, did anybody sign in ahead of time? There's nobody signed up at this time. Okay. Was there anybody here that uh, wanted to speak? Please uh, come to the podium, state your name and uh, address, and then. Uh, your clock is going to start. Okay. Good evening. My name is Lisa Washington. I reside at 17556 Summer Duck Drive, Dumfries, Virginia. And I wanted to speak to you all about the possibility of obtaining a sidewalk in our neighborhood from our subdivision, which is, uh, uh, what's the name of the subdivision? Hampstead, Hampstead That's Landing. the one. Thank you. Hampstead Landing. Um, my oldest daughter here, she works at the Boys and Girls Club. She walks to and from work most evenings. Mm -hmm. 
uh, most days, and it is a fairly treacherous little walk out there from uh, all up and down Possum Point out to get to Route 1 where the sidewalk again engages. Um, there are a lot of trucks. There's a lot of uh, motor vehicle activity out there. Um, there's a lot of wild animals out there. Um, and I was just wondering if there would be the possibility of looking into obtaining a sidewalk for that area just to make it safer for pedestrians. Still got four minutes. That's it. I'm okay. Good. All that right. Was well, pretty much the point so I generally during make. citizen comment time, we don't we don't respond. We just okay. take notes. Thank but you. Thank you. And then somebody. That's why we get your information for file. Thank you. All right. Was there anybody else uh, here that wanted to address the council? All right. Seeing none, we will we'll close citizen comment period. Our next on our agenda is a presentation from our town manager, which is a proclamation acknowledging the service of our town treasurer, Ms. Retta Ladd. Mr. Rogers. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, if I can, I would like to uh, just read the proclamation that we have uh, for our town treasurer, and then uh, if you would uh, join, you and any other council members would, could join us uh, down front to present to Ms. Ladd. So, uh, residents and Ms. Ladd, a proclamation acknowledging the service of Retta Ladd, treasurer for the town of Dumfries. Whereas Retta Ladd served with distinction as the town clerk of the town of Dumfries from June 1982 to March 1999, and whereas Ms. Ladd has served as town treasurer of the town of Dumfries since April 1999, and whereas Ms. Ladd was a member of the Virginia Municipal Clerks Association and the International Municipal Clerks, and whereas Ms. Whereas during her membership of the VMCA, she served as on the board as a secretary, chaired the scholarship committee, and served as a member on the finance committee. And whereas Ms. Ladd earned her certified municipal clerk in 1994 and her master municipal clerk designation in 2004. And whereas Ms. Ladd was a member of the Virginia Government Financial Officers Association and the Government, Government Finance Officers Association. And whereas Ms. Ladd earned continuing education credits in various areas of accounting through the G Virginia GFOA and received a certificate in professional development from GFOA. And whereas she earned certifications through the Virginia Municipal League for risk management, auditing, human resources, uh, FMLA, uh, WC, and ADA, Compensation, Employee Handbook 101, Employee Attendance Issues, Ethical Considerations for Public Sector Employees, Effective Discipline, and Stress Management. And whereas she was recognized on July 2nd, 1996 for 14 years of outstanding public service and dedication to the Dumfries community. And whereas she served, received on May 17th, 2002, a service award for her outstanding service and dedication to the town of Dumfries and its citizens. And whereas she was named employee of the year on May 17th, 2003, and whereas Ms. Ladd has announced that she will be retiring from the town of Dumfries effective December 31st, 2019. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the gratitude and best wishes of the town council, town staff, and citizens of the town of Dumfries are hereby extended to Ms. Ladd and her husband for continued good health, good fortune, and happiness in all future endeavors.
Miles. Yeah. No, that's not. Next on the agenda is the, uh, we move into our action items. Our first action item is a resolution adopting an additional state holiday, Mr. Rogers. Uh, Mayor, could we start with the introductory item? Okay. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I checked it off. <laughs> I was ahead of the game. Thank you. All right. It's going back to uh, item number seven, introductory items. Ordinance authorized the town manager to enter into an amended lease agreement for the office space at 17, 739 Main Street, the Porter Building. Mr. Rogers. Yes, sir, uh, and thank you for reading that item into the record. Uh, this is an introductory item, and I am asking the council for a motion to authorize a public hearing on this item at the July 2nd meeting. Okay, so you're requesting that council just uh, make a motion to have a public hearing on the negotiation and public hearing of that lease. Yes, sir. Okay. Council, any discussion? Councilman Brewer? Uh, this particular lease, uh, where is this? So this is a cur the current lease in suite one. I believe the room number is 150. And this, we are amending this lease. Okay, so they're already there. Correct. They're, they're, they're wanting to extend their lease? Is that what this is? They're going to relocate. The, the amendment has not been drafted yet, so this motion is for a public hearing. I can provide uh, the copy of the amendment once it's been prepared, and we could discuss the details of that uh, in closed session regarding the real estate, but it has not been drafted yet. Wouldn't we need that before we go into public hearing? So the public hearing, the, the actual item will be before us. So that's why this is on here as an introductory item to authorize us to go into the public hearing. After the public hearing and sufficient explanation, council will authorize me to execute that amendment. But my question is, wouldn't we need to see the lease agreement before we go into a public hearing? No. And you we will wouldn't. be able, you will you you would be able to. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Seeing none, I welcome a motion from the floor. So moved. Second. All right. It's been moved and second to authorize the town manager to enter into an amended lease agreement of town-owned office space. Okay, public hearing, you're absolutely right. I don't have that written there. So public hearing, so the motion is for a public hearing on July 2nd. All right, it's been second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please call for the question. All right, motion carries 7 0. Now, the, the next item on the agenda is a resolution to ad adopt July, July 5th as an additional holiday for the town of Dumfries. Mr. Rogers. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Council, this, our governor has authorized an additional holiday for all state employees on July 5th to uh, follow the July 4th holiday. Um, and because this correspondence went out, many other localities and jurisdictions often adopt the same state holidays. So because the town adopts our own uh, holiday schedule, I am asking in light of the act of the governor that the council uh, would authorize us to adopt uh, July 5th as an additional holiday for our employees as well. All right, council, any discussion? Been uh, move, second. second. All right, discussion. Council Lady Willis. This year only. It doesn't say. It says July fifth. What if July fifth falls on a weekend? Yeah, Maybe twenty. It's specific for this for 20, 2019. 20, 2019. Okay, I'll read it oh. quickly. All right, thank you. All right. So it's been motion. It's been second. Seeing no further discussion, uh, please call for the question.
Motion carries 7 0. All right, next on the agenda is a resolution designating an honorary street in the honor of the McLaughlins. Council Lady Neville. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, for those who may not know, the street when you turn in to come towards Town Hall is actually called Whiskey Street. And I just felt like it was time for a change and also an opportunity to honor people who have worked and contributed significantly to our community. So if you will, I'm gonna go ahead and read the resolution. Mr. Edward McLaughlin and Mrs. Thelma McLaughlin are long standing residents and contributors to the town of Dumfries and the surrounding community. Whereas Mr. McLaughlin served with distinction on the Dumfries Town Council from 1970 to 1974. And whereas Mrs. McLaughlin served with distinction on the Dumfries Town Council from 1980 to 1982. And whereas Mrs. Thelma has served on the Town Dumfries Planning Commission and Board of Zoning and Appeals. And whereas Mr. and Mrs. McLaughlin served uh -oh, together as Grand Marshals of the Dumfries Christmas Parade, the only husband and wife to be so honored. Whereas Mrs. Thelma, along with Eleanor Gum, helped to organize the inaugural Christmas Parade. Whereas Mrs. Thelma served as room mother and oversaw student vision screenings at Dumfries Elementary School for several years. Whereas Mrs. Thelma served as a member of the Dumfries Triangle Rescue Squad Ladies Auxiliary. Whereas Mrs. Thelma was a charter member of Potomac Hospital Ladies Auxiliary. Whereas Mrs. Thelma was a founding member of the Dumfries Beautification Committee. Whereas Mrs. Thelma's service to the Dumfries community is well recognized and evidenced being named Businesswoman of the Year by the Prince William Chamber of Sir Optimus International and Lioness of the Year by the Quantico Lioness Club. Whereas Mr. Edward served as PTA president of Dumfries Elementary. Whereas Mr. Edward served as a member of the Quantico Lions Club. Whereas Mr. Edward, along with Edward Fraley, worked for the Prince William County Public Schools to initiate the first renovations of Dumfries Elementary School over 50 years ago. Whereas Mr. Edward, along with Mr. Fraley, also worked to secure funding for the Graham Park Middle School pool, which allowed the school to be the only one in Prince William County to offer swimming as a component of gym class education. Whereas Mr. Edward was instrumental in relocating the Dumfries Post Office from the corner of Main Street in Washington to its present location at Main Street and Whitehaven Drive. Whereas Mr. Edward worked with the Virginia Department of Transportation to facilitate the construction of the first sidewalk in town along Route 1. Whereas Mr. Edward served as PTA president at Dumfries Elementary School. Whereas the McLaughlins have been members of Triangle Baptist Church for nearly 60 years and have served there in various capacities with distinction. Whereas the town of Dumfries desires to honor and commemorate Mr. and Mrs. McLaughlin for their significant contributions to the community. Whereas pursuant to town code 50-43, the director of public works is responsible for the administration of street names within town. Now, therefore be it resolved that the town of Dumfries hereby designates the complete terminus of Whiskey Street McLaughlin Way. The town of Dumfries. Oh, make y'all clap. The town of
town of Dumfries hereby ordains that the designa designation of the street block made pursuant to this ordinance shall be honorary only and shall not replace existing street names, nor shall it have any effect on the address of any property within the designated block. Pursuant to this ordinance, the Director of Public Works is hereby authorized to place commemorative signage on the designated block. Thank you, Mayor. Dear Council, I move, I'd like to move that we name Whiskey Street McLaughlin Way as an honorary street. Second. It's been moved. You can take your second. Oh. Council, cast your vote, call for the question. Any, any discussion, Council? Comments before we uh, cast our vote? Seeing none, vote. Motion carries 10 0. No, 8 0. <laughs> we got some extra voters in there. Don, Don even voted. <laughs> you even got extra votes in there. Uh, we do appreciate everything you've uh, done for our community. Uh, we appreciate the long work, and uh, it's important that. You have the opportunity to smell your flowers now, and you can hear and appreciate it. You know, most people don't get this recognition until they're long gone, and, and we wanted to let you know as a council that we appreciate everything you've done for this town and community and been a part of this community for so many years. So thank you. Hey, listen, I got the die step to the podium. I'm going to take a, I'm going to take Take, we'll, we'll take a point of privilege here. You know me, so I'm not going to give my name and address, but 61 some years ago, we moved into this town. <laughs> I'm sorry, do you hear me now? She had no problem hearing me at home. But anyway, we have talked about many times how fortunate we were to, in our wanderings, to find a new home. Mount Dumfries. We settled in Springfield in 1958. Uh, by fortune, good fortune, was able to get in business here in town. Moved here in 61. Our son, who's here tonight, was one month and one day old. Both my children are citizens, they're children now, and they're following, thankfully, in our footsteps. We've been blessed by being a member of this community. And I thank you for everything that's come our way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Thelma, would you like to give a couple remarks? Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for your, your humble spirit. All right. Next on the agenda is a resolution authorizing the town manager to enter into a technology acquisition and use of memoranda of understanding with Prince William County uh, for radio technology infrastructure. Mr. Rogers. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as we've discussed a number of times, I believe on this dais and even in our budget work sessions, uh, our police department has been working with Prince William County to ensure that we had an agreement in place so that our officers had the access to the same CAS system as Prince William County. So the agreement that is before you uh, does just that. So I want to thank uh, our town attorney for her hard work and, and wrestling and working with the uh, Prince William attorneys and our police chief uh, for working with uh, Chief and Prince William and staff there and their IT department. Um, so the, this agreement will allow us once executed to uh, have access within our vehicles to the Prince William County system. I do want to make council aware, uh, as you will note, there is a fiscal impact related to this. However, I am work the chief 
is working with Prince William County. The numbers that are included in the draft agreement, there may be some adjustments there, uh, but I just wanted to let council know that we have available funding and we're making provisions available for that. Um, and we can do that within this fiscal year. Um, as soon as we can uh, figure out what that total cost for this year will be, or, or for uh, next year will be, we will make those concessions. So those, that's the detail still to be finalized. Uh, but uh, again, I applaud the chief and the town attorney. And I think this is another good step in the right direction with our collaborative approach uh, working with the county. So once we uh, once we pass this motion tonight, then the then um, you all will finalize signing this, and the memoranda of agreement will be uh, in place. So th uh, this will give us the authority to execute it as soon as that number is finalized, uh, and any other details that may need to be tweaked. Then we will finalize that agreement, and we'll uh, let council know, and we'll provide it. The numbers that are provided here, they will only go down. So okay. we will provide that. All right. Council, any questions? Councilman Fields. Uh, just a comment to the, the hard work that goes behind this and knowing from experience what it's like to work as an officer with and without the CAD system being connected with the county. Citizens, this is a milestone. This is a great communication tool to be on par with the county. So we should greatly appreciate the hard work that has gone into this and it would only increase the officer's capability to do their job that much better. Okay. Any other comments, council? We welcome a motion. All right, been moved. Second. And second. See, seeing no further discussion, please call for the question. All right, motion carries 7 0. All right, next on the agenda is uh, D, a resolution to uh, acknowledge June as Pride Month. Council Lady Neville. Oh, Miles, you're absolutely right. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't write it down. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, June is recognized as Pride Month uh, throughout the country. Um, being that Dumfries is a community that celebrates diversity and is also a safe place uh, for individuals who are members of communities that are traditionally marginalized, I um, am of the opinion that it's important to recognize Pride, June as Pride Month along with other localities. So at this point, I would just like to make a motion adopting the resolution. So moved. Has been motion has been second. Any discussion on this? All right. I think uh, one of the, the key things that Council Lady Mao said is that Town of Dumfries recognizes the importance of equality and freedom from any type of discrimination. So, um, seeing no discussion, please call, call for the question. All right. Motion carries 7 0. All right, next on the agenda is our discussion items. First discussion item, Northern Virginia Regional Commission report. Not Councilwoman Miles, but Council Lady <laughs> Neville. Thank you, Mayor. Um, for phone, that would be nice. As we know, the NVRC is a mechanism for regional coordination of 13 municipalities in Northern Virginia. And I've provided my updates. I will highlight a few. Um, let's see, on Saturday at 10 a.m., we are going to have a rain garden workshop um, provided through coordination and partnership with NVRC. If you live in town, if you live in the county, anyone can come and attend this workshop and learn how we can all set up our own rain gardens. It's free, it's at 10 a.m. in the community center. Also, I'd like to highlight that on July 18th, there will be a community military federal facility partnership meeting with area-based commanders at the NVRC office from 10 to noon. If any of you are interested um, in learning more about that, please let me know, supply the information. Also, they have excellent resources for solar paneling that could bring down power bills, um, our electric bills. 
So that's something I look forward to asking them to bring to our town as well. It's free educational workshops. Um, they have a lot of environmental resources that would benefit our citizens and they can bring down our bill. So that's always a good thing. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out that I kind of left out <laughs> of my report is that I was nominated at our meeting to serve as the vice chair of the Northern Virginia Regional Commission and we will vote on that at our next meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Council, any questions on the report? All right, seeing none, next on the agenda is uh, FY19 fiscal year closeout. Uh, Mr. Rogers, show me the money. Thank you, Mayor. Passing around a now a item or a document that just gives a kind of recap of the FY or status update of the FY19 finances. As you know, we are coming to the close of the end of, or the close of the FY19 uh, fiscal year. So at the uh, we are getting into the season where we will approach our audit. So council will have additional information about the actual. Uh, full accounting for FY19, but I wanted to take the time uh, before we actually hit June 30th to give council an update in regards to our finances. So you'll note that we had a uh, budget of about $6.5 million. Now the 19 budget included both general fund projects as well as capital projects all within that same account. So our actual revenues were 5.6 million for FY19 uh, is what we're projecting. And we're projecting our expenditures to be at approximately 5 million. That leaves a variance of about 600,000 for surplus. Due to the way that the capital projects were budgeted in 19, in order to establish a proper capital budget and to complete those active projects, we are anticipating a transfer of approximately $300,000 from FY19 fiscal year to a separate and appropriate capital fund, which would leave a projected surplus of about $300,000 for fiscal year 19. So as I mentioned, we will provide a full accounting as well as the monthly reports for uh, May and June uh, by the next council meeting, but I just want a council to have an update as we come to the finish line here in 19. All right, Council, any questions? Well, Town Manager, thank you for, um, you know, being ahead of the audit and, and getting us these projections and letting us know where we're at on what projects. Um, I guess when you bring us that report, let us know which capital projects are outstanding and uh, which ones uh, we're going to kind of carry over in our focus for 2020, if you don't mind. Certainly. All right. right. All right, seeing no, uh, no further discussion. Uh, next on the agenda is a discussion to update, um, update on the resolution to enhance the business license process. Uh, Mr. Town Manager, so this is our last discussion item. Yes, sir. So I believe at everyone's desk, this would also be uh, included in the packet, a, a brief update on the resolution, as well as uh, some supporting documentation you'll find on the dais this evening. Uh, because the council adopted the resolution, I wanted to provide a formal update at the meeting. Uh, so resolution 2019-022 requested that uh, staff and I look into ways to streamline our business process and also make sure that we were providing uh, support, not necessarily financial, but support for our emerging businesses and small businesses. So the staff has worked very diligently with uh, not only Prince William, but also our other regional partners to look into the business license process to see what areas that we could improve upon and to, in particular with Prince William, make sure that our processes were in concert with one another so that we can ensure that we were accurately collecting uh, and that businesses had their proper licensing. So. Uh, throughout that process, we determined that the, we needed to make some updates to our business license application. So that application has been updated and it is online in, uh, in English and in Spanish. 
It's also available to uh, as a fillable form now so that you can fill it out electronically. Um, the infographic that you have before you, uh, we are planning to publish that once we have our website update. Uh, but this is just an infographic designed to help walk through, if you are a business, what you need to be licensed. And we did the same for Prince William County so that you can understand as a business in the town, the relationship that we have with the county, there may be, uh, it may be necessary to coordinate with both. So the infographic is designed just to make it easier for uh, folks that want to make sure that they have their proper license. Uh, also, we are pleased to announce that uh, with the Mason Small Business Development Center, we are hoping that uh, they will consummate their agreement soon so to begin offering classes for uh, small and emerging businesses, workshops, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you, Council. All right, Council, any questions about uh, this uh, business licensing process? Councilman Brewer? <coughs> yeah, after reviewing this, um, I was looking back at the problem that we had with one particular business down the road here, and we had just willy-nilly granted a business license to them. Um, something we need to add in there is that any unpaid taxes or injunctions against their business in any other jurisdiction, we need to en encompass all of that. Um, uh, and if they have that, explain what it is. So I think this is something that we need to uh, incorporate in that business license. I know you're trying to streamline things, but um, we don't want um, businesses jumping from one jurisdiction to another trying to avoid taxes from other jurisdictions or any type of criminal activity. I think that's, a, uh, that's absolutely a great point. And I don't know if the town attorney, is there a way we can incorporate to, to, to check to see if people are jumping from state to state or county to county? I don't know, if, is there a way to do that? Okay. Push the mic on. You, you can put the question on there. Okay. Oh, and they can answer the question. They, they can answer the question. If they answer it, if it's false, you can revoke their yeah, license. It's pending. Okay. It's pending so you don't so have to be so specific, specific yeah. about that. So, so we'll just put a question up there. Do you have any yeah. injunctions in any other? So just a simple question is the recommendation. And not just that. You can also ask, um, have they um, – conducted business in any other jurisdictions in the last however many months and they can list the other places that their business has been located and we could follow up with those jurisdictions to see if there's been any problems and, you know depending on depending on if there were any problems there may or may not be anything we can do but it, we can at least do our homework okay vice mayor uh, I was just going to say I don't I, I definitely agree with where um, Councilman Brewer is gone with it. I don't want it to cause any additional work for us to go digging. I'm just, I'm kind of thinking of it along the lines of, like he said, if they check a box and say, no, they haven't, and then the news camera shows up and say, yes, they have, can we automatically, based on, you know, an admission or something like that, revoke their license here and not have to go through the lengthy process that we did with past experiences? I do believe there is a section that allows us to revoke it for fraud. So if they had been fraudulent in their application, then that would give grounds. Do I need to make a motion that we include that? If I may, if I may. I think that this that's an excellent point and I, I neglected to touch on one aspect of the update to the process. One of the things that this highlighted was the need for compliance uh, and having enforcement staff. So I think everything mentioned in all of those strategies mentioned, uh, really your tax, having a tax enforcement staff or staff to do tax enforcement is also critical for uh, finding, the, finding out these types of things and to be able to have provisions wherever uh, as many powers that the law allows us to have to make sure that we take care of those issues, uh, we will put those tools to use. Councilman Brewer? Well, you already have those tools. Um, but, I mean, 
just seem to simplify things. Any un uh, and we can word it, any other unpaid taxes or injunctions against this business in any other jurisdiction, uh, falsification will justify the revocation of business license. And then if there is, we put down there, if so, explain. Let them, let them give us the information. We don't need to take time to dive into it. You know, if something does happen and they've answered the question falsely, you have, you have every right to <coughs> exert your business on them. Great point. Council Lady Willis. Well, they, you have similar questions on a lot of forms that we all fill out. Employment forms, you know, any, any kind of form that really gets to the meat of what we want to do. Um, and I agree with uh, Councilman Brewer and the town manager. We need something like that on that form. Okay. Do you need any action on this discussion item from us, town manager? No, sir. I just wanted to bring, let council know that we, we had done the, staff had done the work. Um, so I, I'd like to thank staff for their efforts on this. And we hope to, to see some improvements within our processes in all the areas hi uh, council highlighted this evening. Council Lady Neville. Okay, first and foremost, I am ecstatic about the, these updates. Um, I do have a few questions. Looking at the town of, I love the color here, but they kind of look alike. So, you know, I read for technical information, so I'm reading the top, so I see the difference, but I wonder, you know, if we put it maybe one black and white, I don't know. We but didn't want to make it grayscale, but you, that we we're working on. It. Okay, I, I, I that's think why it they weren't great. they weren't in the packet because I didn't. But I said let's go ahead and I wanted you all to see yes. what the drafts look like. Okay, looks nice. Um, where do these two intersect? So, as far as do we have to do? So you're setting up your business in town. Do these cross over? to the county at any point because the county or did the county change something like they're gonna send you something to pay taxes to the county as well so can we add how these two intersect mm, yes and we and we're working with the county so that everyone understands what is what the requirements may be because it, it can depend on exactly what it is that you are doing mm -hmm. um, so that's why we have both and so um, what is supposed to happen is when you, regardless of where you come, we're supposed to communicate, you know, we're a town within a county. You need to, you know, make sure that you've done your research for both places to make sure that you're covered. So we can make sure that we try to make uh, the nexus there and have something to, to make sure businesses understand those implications. Okay. And I don't have a copy of the fee schedule in front of me, but the home occupancy certification fee, how much is that and when is it due? Uh, I don't have that information, but I can send that to you. Okay, I believe it's $100. Okay, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. So where would that fall in these steps? So I, I go to the clerk's office, I do my SEC filing online, got my tax ID, then when do I get a home when do I pay that fee and fill out that form for your for the license for your business yes for mm -hmm. the home occupancy certification fee for my home office uh, once we take your application we can process the payment at that time okay so when someone is setting up their business they should have that in typically 50 that per that schedule on mm -hmm. the application as well as the hundred dollars okay yes and um, on the types of businesses just to throw it out there, should we consider adding, I know you have other there, but considering restaurants, just a thought. Certainly. Okay. And that tax rate. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. All right. Seeing no uh, further discussion. Um, next meeting this Thursday, we'll have our state of the town address and our Council work session to be July 2nd, 2019. Huh? Sorry, council, council regular meeting is July 2nd. We'll take out the word work session for the, for the minute. It's a regular meeting. All right, July 2nd. All right, next on the agenda is adjournment. So moved. It's been moved. Second.
You can pick a second. <laughs> Any discussion about a journey? Okay, call for the question. Cast your vote. Let's go for vote. Did everybody cast a vote? All right, motion carries 7-0. This meeting's adjourned.